Hey, hey, it's Jason ODB, the Lincoln Addict, hitting you with another review here. This one is from Bring a Trailer. Many of you know of this website. If you haven't found it, it's fantastic. I really like it. And um, let's jump right in. You see here, this one sold for 80K on 521.22, which from the point of me recording this was about a week ago. The reason why I want to go over it is this is a fantastic presentation of a car for sale, especially a Lincoln Continental. Let's jump right in and take a look. You always, um, you're typically going to see, obviously, a decent description here. I've always um, seen those when I have uh, come here to, to look at different cars. You've got the nice bullet-pointed info here, 59,000 miles shown. Of course, it's got the 430 original uh, presidential black paint. Uh, and some other key, um, you know, normal bullet-pointed info. info. Uh, the 62 Continental Convertibles finished in presidential black over beige leather interior. Uh, it has the 430, uh, automatic trans, and it kind of talks about the soft top, 14-inch wheels. That's all standard stuff. The car is said to have been first sold in Fort Worth, Texas. If we jump down here to the DSO, um, it does not show a DSO here. So I don't know how normal this is. Maybe some cars just didn't have it. And, um, it, it is what it is. The, it, the description goes on. It says the car left the factory, a presidential black. It kind of reinforces the color. Uh, the, it was supposedly rep repainted or resprayed in 92, which 30 years ago, uh, power, Operated top, of course, the left side mirror, reverse hinge doors, all that kind of standard stuff. So far, we see a great three-quarter uh, shot from the front. And apologize that are playing with the dog out there. He's barking loud. Um, you got the, re the rear three-quarter shot here. You can see the tag light is working. Uh, you got the uh, headlights are on here, which indicates also um, the, the the lights are on in the back. Uh, the wheels were chrome a finished hubcap, so they're they're not technically chrome; they're stainless. But that's typically something that that's used as a description. Uh, the BF Goodrich white wall tire, so that's the standard size white wall for that year. A full size spare is stored in the trunk. Um, that's you know standard stuff here for us Lincoln folks. Uh, it talks about the bench seat, uh, power adjustable front seat, lap belts for front passengers, power windows, and a push button AMA from radio. Air conditioning system, which we'll see in the photos, was reportedly repaired during the prior ownership. We can see here, I love this color combo, black paint exterior with, I mean, this interior to me, they're so classy, 61 to 63 is like this dash setup. And, um, and then uh, I love the color as well. I mean, to me, it just goes very well. It's very classy. You can see there are kick panels here. So a little bit of added kind of stuff that's not uh, from the factory, which I, I'm a big proponent of that. I mean, I think this looks clean. It doesn't, um, you know, take away or look, you know, bad in any way. I, I love kick panels. This uh, talks about the three-spoke steering wheel. Uh, frames a, a 120 mile per hour speedometer. And... Um, it kind of reinforces the mileage, 200 of which have been added by the seller. Uh, we can look here and see it is the normal, um, the good fuel pump, so it doesn't have the little um, uh, screws up top that you know immediately tell you that it's a, uh, a two-port. So this is the good three-port. You see the AC compressor here and some of those components. You also see this um, the the fuel lines, the two that come in here that are wrapped. You got one that's the fuel line, and then you get the return line. It's always important that that's there. And then this shield, uh, Cashman, Blair, any of these guys will tell you you want to have that because these engine bays get very hot, and you don't want this to vapor lock, um, where the fuel gets so hot that it's basically. Uh, uh, vaporizing before it even gets into uh the you know the fuel pump and then into the carburetor we i guess i can't scroll I, I was hitting the wrong thing so i can zoom in a little bit um i tend to forget 64 and 65 i know had the i, I think i think the, the early year lincolns had um the metal um shroud which is cool um i don't think that fan looks factory um but 
you know, it is what it is. That's a simple change if you wanted to change it or go electric fan or whatever. But this engine bay is, is normal, which you would see for these cars. It's not detailed. It's not, um, you know, been gone through to clean it up. I mean, to me, this is great. It's a driver. And by all means, I would roll with this just like this, um, unless you want to make it a weekend project. Um, you can see here, they do have the battery disconnect. That's, it's kind of one you could find like at your local, you know, Walmart and things like that. And, and those work good. You twist that and it turns off that connection. I always recommend that for these cars. Cashman, I think even said it on the podcast when I had them on Lincoln addict podcast, that's important because the rear auto drops on these cars, if they're not working and those relays aren't clicking off, uh, it'll drain your battery. We can also see here that it has the single reservoir uh, master cylinder, and this is something you want to change. If you own a Lincoln or you're thinking about getting a Lincoln, uh, you definitely want to change this. Now, I will tell you right here, you can see that it has the speed control, which was a feature. Um, I have been told by somebody that's worked on these cars a long time, it is tougher to put the dual reservoir in with the speed control. I think I may have mentioned that before uh, doing these reviews. What you want to know is um, I have spoken to someone that said that they've done it, uh, the dual reservoir, and where the kind of the lines and the actual master cylinder, um, where it kind of protrudes out, you have some pieces here that tie into the speed control. So that could be why, you know, that it hasn't been changed. To me, it would be worth if you had to, let's say you, you had a local um, mechanic or, or a place that you know knows their stuff from a from a brake standpoint, and they go, "Oh yeah, we could put a um, uh, you know a, a dual master on it with a proportioning valve to kind of give you better um, you know brake setup." Uh, and, and, and if they couldn't figure out how to make it work with the speed control, I mean, to me, like, how often are you really going to use speed control? You know. Um, I, I think it's cool that it's here. A lot of people like to kind of have it just kind of for show that, hey, it's that extra feature. But if it's not working, again, you know, how often are you going to get up on the interstate and really dial that in? Um, and also, it may not even be working, and that would be another reason to, to want to upgrade um, the, the master. So here it talks about the um, – it's equipped with a, a two-barrel carb uh, – 300 horsepower kind of just factory stuff. Um, I do like that it has the underneath photo here. You can see this piece that I always talk about, making sure it doesn't have rust. You know, it, it has the typical kind of undercoating, you know, 60 year old feel to it, right? It doesn't look like anybody's got underneath here and sprayed it with undercoating to hide anything. I mean, this is a, a true car and, and they all generally look like this. Um, the oil paint actually looks cleaner than most that I've seen. So uh, not bad. And of course, some paint's missing here. I mean, that's all little minor cosmetic stuff believe it or not you look at a lot of this stuff before you buy the car then when you get it you just you're so excited just to get in and drive it and it works you know a lot of this stuff most people never touch factory trance has reportedly been replaced with a ford c6 three-speed automatic additional underside um, images are provided in the gallery you can't see anything here i mean i don't know why anybody would change it from the trans they used in the early 60s to what they transitioned to in 66 which was the c6 but um who knows maybe they couldn't find anything they didn't know how to fix it they put in whatever they could but that seems a little odd the serial number reveals the car was Wixom. Cashman and Blair have reinforced to me all of these cars were built at the Wixom plant, kind of the sister car to the Thunderbird. Uh, 430, we've seen that. Decoding the door tag reveals information we've already went through. Um, manufacturers, literature, handwritten ownership notes, service records are included. This is cool, man. This right here will reinforce uh, to somebody that's got some money that you know money is no object to them and and they're going to get it if you know if it has these records and they can see that these cars were cared for um i love watching dennis collins show on youtube uh coffee walk and you know oftentimes i mean if you've watched it he gets super excited with stuff like this you know when was it last registered and things and and to me like i i love seeing this stuff it, it shows that someone really cared for it um what I want to do here is I'm going to turn this down. Um, you, you've heard me talk about videos, like how important they are. Look what they did. They put a video here. By the way, it's not a private video, so you can click it. You can pull it up. And I'm not going to um, really play all the way through it. Well, at least 
that's that wasn't my intention. But you know, they they show a cold start. They show the hood up, the top working. I mean, look, they're in this nice, beautiful facility. Kind of shows it's on a fly by night type of place. Top going down, windows going down, top coming up. Right, top working windows. Then they they transition with their little. Um, they say driving. I mean, I this sold me right here. I mean, look how nice the interior is. You get to see it outside, which oftentimes you know you're you're seeing this stuff inside, so you don't get the light on everything. So you can see. I mean, this car. I mean, wow. Look at the dash. I love the interior color. Um, I mean, just really, really, really nice. You got the optical eye up here, which was also. Um, a feature that's the headlamp dimmer, dimmer. People sometimes give me a hard time for calling it the optical eye. I don't know if that's what it was called with Chevy or where I started calling it that. But they've got two links. It's the same video. That that video right there to me is like boom. From the information we've seen so far, I get to the point of the photo gallery and say, man, I've already seen enough to go. Man, this is a nice car. Okay. Uh, here, nothing to you know really kind of hone in on. Uh, bumpers look fantastic. You've got um, good um, uh, you know spacing and whatnot kind of through both of the bumpers. You can see everything's really nice. Uh, beautiful kind of afternoon photos here with the sun going down. The wheel kind of turned a little bit to the right, so you got a chance to see kind of the hubcap in there, um, how nice the tires are. Um, looking at these tires, it's – okay, one thing I'm not an expert at is, is you know, looking at these tires and going, hey, are they bias ply? I think these are bias ply tires. You can get from like Coker and stuff. They'll make a bias ply tire, um, but they also make some that are radials that look like bias ply. Uh, if you – have ever rode on bias ply tires that are not the easiest to ride on, but people buy them because of the look. They want that vintage sixties or prior look. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a radio guy. Like let's be safe, you know, that type of thing. But if I bought this car and these tires were good, I mean, I'd rock it. Now, if I drove this car a lot and you kind of felt on the road that you just felt like it just wasn't like, you know, which, which you're accustomed to, then by all means, you know, definitely feel like you want to change the tires. But to me, as far as the look, the quality, the presentation of this car, again, I know you're probably thinking, well, hey, this one already sold. Why are you going back? Well, these are the things that the, you, we've already established. The presentation of your classified or listing or whatever you want to say, I mean, it's it's going to make or break it. And you've seen these cars. We've we've showed some that are struggling to sell for twenty, thirty grand. This one obviously is a nice car, but. It, it, we've seen the hundred thousand dollar car the other day on eBay. The person didn't have a good presentation. They had three, four, five, seven photos with their iPhone straight up and down in portrait mode. Um, no, it, it, that wasn't a good presentation. This fantastic. Okay, there's a lot of detailed photos. I don't want to spend a lot of time on each. The deck lid, you will see. There's more detailed photos, and you're seeing some of this here. Absolutely, these are always a little challenging on these cars, but I'll tell you what, underneath the deck lid looks fantastic. Again, a lot of photos here. I'm going to kind of go through these a little uh, quicker than I normally do because, the one, the car's already sold. Um, I also love that it has the original interior, man. Uh, I, I so often see people that will redo the interior and not want – if it's ratty, by all means, like with Robert, with the red car I bought, you know, I've seen some photos of the way the interior – it had to be redone. But, you know, you'll have people that will get interior like this and go, I'm going to rip this out and put all all new stuff. Man, this stuff to me is gold, and, and I know others that are kind of into the same thing. You can even see here on the top of the seat, you know, like little marks and stuff. And, and to me, that's the character of this car. It's only original uh, once. Now, you could argue and say, hey, it's been resprayed. Sure, it has, but it, I guarantee you get in this car, it starts right up. It's got the vintage feel, and uh, it's it's a beautiful one. So uh, looking in here, uh, it's got obviously the splash shields, um, so, so that's good. And then you can look under here and see this is all standard stuff right here, uh, or not standard, but you want to look to make sure this isn't all rusty, and, and it's not. Uh, you're, I'm kind of looking at some of any of the dents and dings, and I mentioned the other day on 66 and 67 that these are pot metal. These are stainless in the earlier Lincolns, and there's less likely to see, you know, a lot of damage and whatnot. I mean, they, these look, you know, great.
You can see the paint's not perfect. Um, and again, let's say it was resprayed, um, like my blue car was at some point between the 70s, 80s, or in this case, they said the early 90s. Um, you know, it, 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 you know, it's, it, it shows it's not perfect, but I almost like having a car that's not perfect because you can get in, you can drive it, you can enjoy it. Now, um, I'm going to hit escape for a minute and show this is a 62. Okay. So we've, we've established that the reason why I wanted to mention that is my understanding was this keyhole cover was a 61 option. And then I was told rest in peace by Tim Nill and a few others that it was only on early 62s. Now, based upon the VIN, they mentioned J, which I think they said September. I thought J was October. I could be wrong on that, but that, you know, means that it was that it was produced um later on in, in in the year. So, if anybody happens to know like did this go through all of 62 these little keyhole covers or um did they just run the parts until they were out? You know, that's something I've been curious about. Um, if, if, if you guys don't chime in, I'll, I'll get the answer for another video from, uh, my, my friend TC. Okay. So you can see here, someone did take the time to kind of polish this and you could do this on your car and, and believe it or not, um, with some of the tips I've talked about, uh, with the quadruple zero steel wool and whatnot, um, you can really clean these pieces up. Uh, these in particular, um, I, I, I wouldn't, I don't know. I haven't tried the steel wool on these peak moldings, so I wouldn't recommend that until I try it, unless you've done it. What I would tell you though, is anything that I recommend or anybody else always do it first on an inconspicuous area to make sure that you're happy with the result. You know, you wouldn't want to just go, Hey, you know, Jason, the Lincoln addict told me to do this. And I immediately ran out and did it and it messed my car up. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be responsible for anyone making, you know, any, any damage on their car, but, but trust me, you know, you can get in here in some of these tight little areas and be, and, and be amazed, um, at, at the results. And I'll do some tech videos in the very near future, um, where, you know, I, where I talk about that and show that. Um, so here you've got Virginia safety approval. So, you know, I love seeing the old stickers on the cars, um, it kind of sometimes will give insight into when was it last registered. It's got a Clifford alarm sticker here. So, um, hopefully not too much monkeying, uh, so to speak. It might just be like a, a starter kill or something like that. That's, that's been put on. I'd imagine as nice as this car is, you know, someone hasn't done too, too much with it. Um, speaking of the stainless, these pieces in here, I had mentioned before I took the quadruple zero and I clean these up very, very nicely. They will get surface rust on them and you would be amazed at what you can do to clean these up. Now, these of course are, are very, very nice. Uh, I wouldn't even recommend even having to do it on these, but that's an area that you could kind of try, um, you know, to make sure that the results are what, you know, you want, uh, for something that I'm recommending or others. The, uh, uh, this mirror, I also cleaned mine up before this one looks fantastic. If a car has been sitting out a lot, you'll see surface rust on it, you know, stuff that can be cleaned up. Uh, these are repopped so you can get these, but, um, on this, um, which I always loved how, um, these mirrors are mounted, uh, everything up here looks really, really nice. And you can just see how original the leather looks. It just looks fantastic. Top seems like it has been redone. Um, that's my opinion based upon just seeing these cars a lot. And, uh, you know, obviously it works. Back window's clear. These will tend to get um, a little kind of foggy, so to speak. Uh, just showing more detail. You can see, obviously, they have a lot of cars. So they probably buy stuff, sit on it, you know, sell it, you know, whatever. But, you know, clearly they have... Um, you know, they have a lot going on here. You can see some of the photos there we, we looked at before with the deck lid and a lot of detail. So I'm kind of going through these a little quicker. This looks like someone just put a little cap in there. Um, that's the way I kind of see it. Um, these uh, obviously tend to get, you know, pretty nasty. These look really, really good with the interior wise. Don't have the original f um, floor mats, which is fine. Uh, but you know, we just wanted to point that out. You can see here, they're just showing the detail. Uh, you know, these stickers kind of popping off. I'm sure someone remakes those. And dash is just fantastic. I mean, this, you know, 
this this is a nice car and you can see why it sold for 80 grand you got seat belts in it uh, these obviously you guys know it's got the front kick panels these pods that someone's made I've only seen this one time I've seen someone make a cool little pod that kind of sits over here and um, you know kind of a cool thing they didn't really go and get crazy with making custom door panels or anything but this is something that you probably would take out I mean I guess it would kind of sit right in here but I mean for your passengers the footwell I, I, I don't know that you'd want to leave that but at least it you know, it kind of looks like the material kind of looks similar, and, and if you wanted to leave it, you could. So, again, you're probably thinking, why are you even going over this one? The car already sold. Look at the presentation of it. Lots of detail. Is the car perfect? Absolutely not. You know, you look at these little panels, and you go, hey, it's not perfect or whatever. You could get this car store it away, drive it, enjoy it, whatever you want to do. Maybe you go in and you 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 take it to that next level. You take this eighty thousand dollar car and it becomes a hundred, hundred and twenty, hundred and fifty thousand, absolutely. Uh you could come in here and detail all this. You know, Nathan Wilson often blows these cars apart and cleans all the wiring and just does so much cool stuff. You could, you know, you absolutely could. You can see here, uh, this is probably the best photo I've seen that I've been doing these where you can see that uh, there is a little bit of a coating on here. And these don't look bad at all. But one of my videos in the future, I'll do uh, a demonstration on how you can clean these up. Now, these I probably wouldn't even touch. But oftentimes when you see these coatings, you'll actually see, um, you know, they don't look very nice. And it looks like there's almost like um, clear coat is peeling off. These again, I mean, I don't know that I would get crazy. I would just kind of get in here and clean and maybe polish a little bit of stuff, um, you know, on a weekend just for fun. But uh, I mean, this, this is a nice car. I wouldn't be going doing too, too much with it. So just for sake of over 20 minutes now, I'm just going to kind of go through these a little quicker. And I keep saying that. Um, here's where I wanted to get to. Uh, man, just look in the trunk, man. You, I mean, you see all of this is really nice. There's not any rust. There's nothing going crazy in here that's making you freak out or go, man, something's not right. They do not have the bar in here, which I'll do a future video on that. There's a bar that you can make or purchase from John Brewer. Uh, John Cashman was also a big proponent. He would install – um, there's for another video, but there is a reason why the bar from 61 to 65 should be installed between this or this. So you got the upper and the lower, and it would come all the way across to the same little, um, not rivet, but you know, this, the same indicator on this side, you'd have a bar that goes across and I'll talk about in a future video why you would want that. Um, so you can see here all original type, you know, stuff. This probably hasn't really been gone through. Uh, it doesn't look like John Cashman's ever worked on this car. You know, a lot of upgrades. Um, if the top works, hey, rock it. Uh, eventually, you know, you're probably going to need to do some updates on a top if you get a car like this. Um, it's hard to tell if some of this stuff has been changed. But uh, regardless, you know, you know, if it's if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's my philosophy. You can see in here, although it looks really good underneath here, there is – this is not bad at all. But um, you can see that th this was probably resprayed at some point, and this car was kept in really, really nice condition. A lot of detailed photos. You know, this stuff you can get in there and clean up um, if you really want to. You got the jack and stuff in there. You got a disc changer, which, you know, obviously the only thing that he really did, it looked like he put out an alarm. He did a um, the kick panels. He did the rear speaker pods. And um, there is a photo that shows the glove box where he has a uh, head unit right here installed. And, hey, I'm all for it. Put it in the glove box. Don't. Don't, you know, disturb the look of the 60s, man. I mean, it's to me, it's it's worthless to put the CD player up here. Uh, CD players aren't even needed these days. Um, the last few things I'll share and then I'm going to wrap the video up. So underneath the car, I mean, nothing is suspect here. I still am a big proponent of have eyes on the car. But I can tell you this, you know, obviously somebody with some money bought this one. And you know, if they didn't have someone look at it, I mean, you can see the presentation's really good. Uh, although these are never clean, um, this one isn't as bad as some of the other ones we've looked at. Um, even my, you know, I got a, a real nice Lincoln, uh, uh, you know, a couple of them I consider nice and, and, and they're always, you know, leaking something.
You got the 62 owner's manual. And then here, I mean, boom, just look at the presentation. You've got receipts. They've covered up the person's name. They've got dates um, talking about just, every, I mean, this is pretty OCD. You got um, just different stuff here kind of reinforcing how much money someone, this right here sells it. For someone that's got money, they go, wow, whoever had this car, and I think the owner that has it now or that had it, he he probably bought it from this guy is based upon the kind of the story that I'm seeing there. But um, you can see here October 22nd, 2002, so 20 years ago, Lincoln Land. You know, shout out to Chris and the whole team there. And then, boom, you got this book. So that's what – that's I'm going to wrap it up with this one and just say, look, 62 Lincoln Continental Convertible, wonderful presentation. We've seen photos underneath. We've seen them under the hood. Tons of detail photos. A little bit of backstory here on it. Uh, and then I, I skipped over this earlier, but it was purchased by someone uh, on eBay, it looks like, um, or on BAT, Bring a Trailer, in September 2021. So there you have it. Check out Lincoln Addict Podcast. However you find podcasts, you can always just Google Lincoln Addict and it will land on the website. You can hit play. Uh, Podbean is who hosts my podcast. So by all means, you can always just download Podbean app on your iPhone or Android. Don't forget, iPhone has a pre-installed podcast app, which is titled Podcasts. You can go right into that purple icon and search Lincoln Addict and hit subscribe or follow. And boom, it's free. No cost. All right. Take care. Have a safe weekend. And to all those that we lost, Memorial Day is why we celebrate um, those that we did lo lose in the armed forces. So rest in peace to the folks that have passed during their time in the armed services. ODB, the Lincoln Attic, be out of here.